Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show, with the launch of the Hyperion, Su Yen also saw the effect of those red particles. When the red particles emitted from the spores touched the Zerg corpse on the ground. The exoskeleton was comparable to an alloy Zerg corpse, and it turned into a pool of blood almost instantly. And these blood water is the source of nutrition for the Zerg, biomass. Su Yen also obtained a lot of information about the will of the Zerg from Baying. After the birth of the general Zerg, there is not much wisdom, and they will only follow the instinct of the body to continue to kill. However, once they are endowed with spiritual fragments of Zerg consciousness, they will become the incarnation of Zerg will. The will of the Zerg can control the Zerg soldiers, making them fight like a well-trained force. Moreover, once the Zerg with the spiritual fragments of the Zerg will die, the spiritual fragments will be transferred to other Zerg. In other words, as long as the spiritual fragment cannot be destroyed. These Zerg will have an undead commander. Every Zerg has the potential to become the incarnation of the will of the Zerg. Unless the spiritual fragment is destroyed, in this case, the will of the Zerg will lose its control over the Zerg in this area. Those Zerg will also lose control and turn into 000 beasts again. Compared to a well-trained Zerg army, the beastized Zerg have nothing to fear. That's why Su Yen didn't use the Hyperion to destroy the Hornworm in the first place. Once the Hornworm is killed, another Hornworm will stand up. Only by destroying the spiritual fragments can the Zerg be completely defeated. Moreover, Su Yen can be sure that among the Zerg fleet in outer space, there is also a Zerg ship with spiritual fragments of Zerg will. Otherwise, it is impossible for these Zerg ships to directly send warships to bomb the ground within a short period of time when the ground troops are disintegrated. This is obviously because of the failure of the ground troops, so the Zerg fleet chose surface bombing. Because at this time, the Zerg ground troops are already the disadvantaged side. Even if it is ground bombing, it is the financial star troops on the financial star side who will suffer. Moreover, after the Zerg soldiers are turned into biomass, they will be remanufactured by the Zerg mother nest in the future. Converted down, the Zerg is not at a loss at all. At this moment, Su Yan's Hyperion also encountered a bombing Zerg ship. The prow of these Zerg ships has a large mouth, and there are countless tentacles growing around the ship, which can bind the enemy at any time and then swallow it. At this moment, Jin Luo and Jin Xing stood in the middle of the bridge, and they saw the monster-like Zerg ships through the window. A Zerg ship found Su Yan's Hyperion, and then its tentacles swayed, turning its direction to attack Su Yan. Seeing this, Su Yan also sneered. The Yamato cannon is fully charged. Boom! A cannon blasted directly at the Zerg ship. It was just a Yamato cannon. When the Yamato cannon touched the Zerg ship, the terrifying energy exploded directly. The violent energy directly opened a huge blood hole in the Zerg ship. The Zerg ship let out a scream, and the surrounding Zerg ships also noticed Su Yen. A large number of Zerg ships turned around and attacked towards Su Yen. Seeing such a large number of Zerg ships, even Jean Luo's face turned pale. With so many Zerg ships, how should they cope? But Su Yen didn't seem to see these Zerg ships, and opened the operation panel of the Hyperion. Su Yen activated the ATX laser turret, and a large number of laser turrets were released directly. Any Zerg ship that wants to get close to the Hyperion will receive the most violent attack from the Hyperion. Boom! The Yamato cannon was fired again. After all, these Zerg ships are biological ships, and their defense depends entirely on their health. Su Yan uses the Yamato cannon, which is guaranteed to take away a Zerg ship each time it fires. The surrounding Zerg ships that wanted to approach were also hit hard by the ATX laser cannon. At this moment, on the Zerg ship behind, several giant Zerg flew out. These Zerg are like jellyfish, dancing their tentacles and attacking the Hyperion. And these Zerg are bombing bugs carried by Zerg ships. The role of these bombers in the Zerg fleet is equivalent to a bomber, usually trimmed on the Zerg aircraft carrier. Now, these bombers are flying towards Su Yen, and the target is the Hyperion. 
Suddenly, a bomber opened its eyes, and a psionic laser bombarded the Hyperion's armor directly. Boom. For a time, the entire Hyperion was shaking. The powerful psionic laser opened a hole directly on the Hyperion's armor. But only a pothole was opened, and the recycled steel repaired the pothole almost in the blink of an eye. Su Yan looked at the approaching bomber, which was also a Viking fighter in the decisive engine bay. The firepower of one of these bombers may not be enough to damage the entire Hyperion. But watching more and more bombers take off, the number has exceeded a thousand. Such a number of bombing bugs, a salvo, even the Hyperion could not bear it. Viking fighters are starting. Several Viking fighters flew out of the Hyperion, and these Viking fighters soared into the sky. Before the bombers could react, the Viking fighter jets fired a large number of artillery pieces, which landed on the bombers. Boom! When the damage exceeds a certain level, the bomber worm directly detonates the spiritual energy in the body, turning into a group of gorgeous fireworks in the air. Viking fighter planes hovered in the air, and endless artillery fire slanted on the bombers like a torrential rain. Seeing the bombing bugs being destroyed one after another, Jean Luo couldn't help but sigh that the troops in Su Yan's hands were really powerful. However, what Jean Luo didn't understand the most was that they could use space to jump away from the financial star. Why continue to stay here now? With the passage of time, more and more Zerg ships will be besieged. Finally, Jean Luo asked, Su Yan, your ship can make a space jump. Since you can make a space jump to escape from here, why are you still fighting against these Zerg fleets here? There will be more and more Zerg ships, no matter how powerful your Hyperion is, it will eventually be overwhelmed by a huge number of Zerg fleets. After listening to Jean Luo's words, Su Yan turned to look at Jean Luo. Why run away if you can win? Can win? How to win? The Zerg fleet that invaded the Financial Star has at least the scale of thousands of ships. Even if Su Yan drove all the ships, he had less than 20 ships, what would he do to win? And Su Yan pointed to the Zerg fleet and explained, These Zerg fleets are essentially an oversized Zerg creature. Any Zerg creature will be mobilized by the will of the Zerg, only in this way can they attack and defend in an orderly manner. That is to say, as long as the ships where the will of the Zerg are to be destroyed, these Zerg fleets will be self-defeating. Now, I have locked the position of the Zerg mothership, if I can win, why should I run away? Do you want to turn the Jean clan into a space-wandering clan? Jean Luo was stunned, she didn't expect that Su Yan had already made all the plans. Even the location of the Zerg mothership has been investigated. However, with such a large number of Zerg ships, can he really destroy the Zerg mothership from among the Zerg ships? There are thousands of ships on the opposite side, and just forming a meat shield is enough to keep the Zerg mothership safe and sound. At this moment, a huge shadow fell in the sky, Jean Luo looked up, and the two moon-class cruisers landed like gods. Around it, any Zerg ships that want to approach will be crushed by its powerful firepower and huge body. Su Yen watched the arrival of the moon-class cruiser, and the corner of his mouth rose slightly. Good, time to fight back. As soon as these words came out, Jean Luo immediately understood. Why Su Yen didn't choose to retreat until now, it turned out to be because he was already prepared. Jean Luo couldn't help but smile bitterly, what was she worried about? Ever since he knew Su Yen until now, has he not been scheming and playing the enemy with applause? Su Yen activated the space jump and disappeared directly in place. The Zerg ships lost sight of their targets, but when Su Yen reappeared, he was already between the two moon-class cruisers. I have gathered the enemies for you, now listen to my orders. Fire up, give me a blast. The Zerg ships gathered by the Hyperion are a group of live targets in the eyes of the Moon-class cruisers and the Valkyrie firepower ships. 2.6 It was only at this time that the Zerg ships discovered that the Hyperion was just a bait to attract them to gather. The point is, this bait will also flash and run away. Rumbling The artillery fire was released, and the terrifying firepower directly swallowed dozens of Zerg ships. A scream after another screamed from the flames. The Zerg mothership sensed the large-scale fall of the Zerg ships, and it was also a tight heart. 
With the loss of contact with the ground troops, now their Zerg fleet has also suffered large-scale casualties. What is the problem? A low-level planet in the outer sea is actually so difficult to capture. The Zerg mothership couldn't sit still, and under its command, a huge group of frigates attacked the Financial Star. The artillery fire continued to vent, and the Zerg ships launched a counterattack in the midst of the fire. But at this moment, even the slowest Valkyrie fireboat was equipped with recycled steel. The defense is comparable to a fortress, and the Zerg's firepower falls on the Valkyrie firepower ship, just like a tickling. Powerful firepower, terrifying defense, this is the fleet that Su Yen has carefully built. At this time, Su Yen on the Financial Star finally saw the Zerg mothership surrounded by thousands of frigates. Very good, the big fish is hooked. Thousands of Zerg ships, carrying Zerg motherships, came to the Financial Star. After seeing such a huge number of Zerg fleet, Jean Luo's expression changed. How can Su Yen kill the Zerg mothership from such a huge circle of Zerg ships? And at this time, the fleet of the Jean clan also came. They followed Su Yan's fleet and drove straight in. Almost all the ships in the way were destroyed by Su Yan's Luna class cruisers. This made the captain of the Jean clan fleet feel incredible. At this moment, the captain of the Jean clan was on the bridge, and also received a communication signal from the Hyperion. After receiving this signal, the captain of the Jean clan fleet also immediately connected to the communication. In the communication channel, Su Yan's face appeared in front of the captain of the Jean clan fleet. Seeing such a young man in front of him, the captain of the Jean clan fleet couldn't help but gasp. The other party is so young? At this time, Jean Luo also came to Su Yan's side. I am Jean Luo of the Jean clan. From now on, all the fleets under your command must obey Su Yan's command. The Jean clan's fleet is temporarily incorporated into Su Yan's fleet. 99. This matter is about the safety of the financial star, don't be impatient and follow Su Yan's orders. Hearing the words of Jean Luo opposite, the captain of the Jean clan fleet was also stunned. To merge his fleet into Su Yan's fleet? Looking at the moon class cruisers that were killing all directions outside, the captain of the Jean clan fleet thought for a moment and then agreed immediately. The Jean clan fleet includes one S class ship, the Golden Glory, 131, 10 A class ships and 50 C-class firepower ships. Originally, they were able to organize more ships to fight back, but the Zerg was aggressive, and many of their ships were destroyed by the Zerg before they could take off. The only ones who can resist, now, are the fleets in front of them. Su Yen directly obtained all the command rights of the Jean clan fleet. When the Jean clan fleet joined the establishment, the ships that Su Yen could command soared directly to more than 80 ships. More than 80 ships, against thousands of Zerg fleets, what are the odds of winning? Almost everyone agrees that the probability of victory is zero. But Jean Luo and others chose to believe in Su Yen, and at this time, they had no choice but to believe in Su Yen. Su Yen opened the command panel, and next, it was the game between him and the will of the Zerg. The Zerg mothership opposite immediately recalled all the remaining Zerg ships, and all the ships clustered around the Zerg mothership. Everyone, have you seen the largest ship in the center? 35. That is the command mothership of the Zerg, we only need to destroy the Zerg mothership, and the Zerg fleet will be self-defeating. And there is only one thing you have to do, and that is to send me to the Zerg mothership. I am confident that as long as I get close to the Zerg mothership, I can destroy it. In the communication channel, Su Yen also told all the ships of their target. The Zerg mothership on the opposite side also understands, and the opposite side may want to put the target on it. So it also surrounded all the Zerg ships around it, forming a defensive offensive. Su Yan looked at the tightly armed Zerg ship in front of him, his face was sinking, and he waved his hand. Attack! With an order, the Moon-class cruiser charged first. A large number of bombing bugs flew out from the Zerg ships and flew towards the Moon-class cruiser. The Zerg mothership is very clear about the terrifying deterrent power of these two huge ships. Therefore, in the first time, the Zerg mothership released all the bombing insects. The dense bombardment insects flew towards the two moon-class cruisers, like a swarm, 
But Su Yan obviously thought of this situation, and the Viking fighter jet rushed out of the Hyperion and attacked the bombers. Rumbling For a time, a large number of flames filled the entire battlefield. Su Yan handed over the command of the Jin clan fleet to Ling Bing, and Ling Bing asked the Jin clan fleet to launch interceptors to intercept the Zerg bombers. A large number of interceptors flew out from the ship. For a time, bombing bugs were mixed with a large number of interceptions. Every moment, bombing bugs were falling, and at the same time, a large number of interceptors fell like raindrops. But fortunately, under the cover of these interceptors, the behemoth moon-class cruiser penetrated into the enemy's hinterland like a sharp knife. A large number of Zerg ships bombarded the moon-class cruiser, and the dense psionic cannonballs fell on the huge body of the moon-class cruiser like a torrential rain. Even the Moon-class cruiser is equipped with weapons such as macro cannons and lances, and it seems a little insignificant under such a fierce attack. The Valkyrie fireboat is also constantly venting its huge firepower, countless artillery fire poured out. Rumbling The outside of the Hyperion was already shrouded in artillery fire. The entire Hyperion was constantly shaking, and the energy barrier flickered. Even so, Su Yen still chose to move forward. There may be a chance of survival if you fight to the death. But if you escape, you will surely die. With strong conviction, Su Yen commanded the Moon-class cruiser to move on. The continuously lit artillery fire illuminated the road ahead, and the distance from the Zerg ship was getting closer and closer. Just then, a huge Zerg ship appeared. I saw that this Zerg ship had a pair of fangs, compared to other ships. In the next second, the fong-toothed Zerg ship rammed directly into one of the Moon-class cruisers. Boom! The fangs pierced deeply into the body of the Moon-class cruiser. For a time, a large number of Zerg cruisers chose to jump into the Moon-class cruisers. Seeing that the Moon-class cruiser was breached and countless Zerg ships chose to join the gang, Jean Luo couldn't help but feel nervous for a while. It's over, your Moon-class cruiser was gained by the Zerg. After hearing the news, not only did Su Yan's face not show the slightest nervousness. On the contrary, a smile appeared on Su Yan's face. Good guy, dare to help your own Moon-class cruiser. The Zerg mothership will regret its decision in a while, and Su Yan's fleet might not be very strong. However, the soldiers on board were not vegetarians. On the Moon-class cruiser, a large number of Zerg poured into the Moon-class cruiser, through the ship. One of the Zerg hunters took the lead and rushed into the cabin of the Moon-class cruiser. However, when it just passed a corner, a sonic knife directly decapitated the Zerg hunter with lightning speed. The escort army had long been ambushed here with a stun gun, and a powerful current burst out. Not long after, those Zerg soldiers who had just invaded were directly electrocuted. But the Zerg soldiers at the back did not know what was going on in front of them and were still rushing into the cabin. For a time, there were electric lights in the cabin. A special sound wave echoed in the cabin, and the Zerg soldiers were disturbed by the sound wave attack of the infiltrator, and they were confused as if they had drunk fake wine. When the mechanical priest came to the battlefield and saw the corpse of the Zerg hunter on the ground, his eyes lit up. Captain, this is the best biological modification material. The mechanical priest showed a penetrating smile, and then he urged his mechanical arm to drag the corpse of the Zerg hunter on the ground into his laboratory. Not long after, another mechanical priest quietly entered the battlefield and then dragged away several Zerg corpses. Afterwards, there was another mechanical priest. This mechanical priest was even more extreme. He directly dragged a small cart and carried away the corpses of several Zerg hunters on the ground. Those Zerg will never think that their corpses will be used for biological modification. While those Zerg were still dying one after another, the Zerg mothership was finally exposed to Su Yen. The Zerg mothership looks like a huge octopus, and it continuously sends out brain waves to command many Zerg ships. It's time to end. Su Yen used the Yamato cannon to aim at the Zerg mothership. Boom. 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 Three large 000 and guns were fired continuously, and the Zerg mothership was directly hit by three large and large cannons. 
three consecutive Yamato cannons, even S-class ships, could not resist. A powerful force exploded in the body of the Zerg mothership. But at this moment, the spiritual fragments of the will of the Zerg flew out from the body of the Zerg mothership. Su Yan saw that mental fragment flying towards a Zerg ship on the periphery. If this spiritual fragment enters the body of other Zerg ships, that ship will become a brand new Zerg mother ship. But Su Yan had long thought of this situation, and the hatch of the Hyperion opened slowly. Baying stood at the cabin door, and the power of psionic energy burst out. In an instant, the violent psionic power directly formed a huge cage in space. The spiritual fragments of the Zerg will that were going to escape were directly intercepted. At this time, the will of the Zerg on the Evernight Star panicked. It lost the news of another spiritual fragment, and lost two spiritual fragments in a row. Even the will of the Zerg is a burst of rage. This time, it finally received the message from Fragment, it was that human being. That human annihilated two of its spiritual fragments, one after another. This hatred, it remembered. Any creature that prevents it from eating, will be the enemy of the Zerg. On the side of the financial star, Su Yan absorbed the spiritual fragments of the will of the Zerg, and Su Yan's psionic value also increased again. At this time, the Zerg fleet outside lost the control of the Zerg will. Suddenly began to collapse, the Zerg ships that were like wolves and tigers were scattered, and they didn't dare to fight back. Seeing this scene, Su Yan breathed a sigh of relief. The result of the battle was announced. Everyone, we are victorious. 99, they succeeded in defending the Golden Galaxy from the Zerg army. Jean Luo couldn't believe her ears. The Golden Galaxy actually resisted the attack of the Zerg. Shanghai Express, as of today, 18,000 planets have been invaded by Zerg, and many Shanghai races have been living in Shanghai. Empire Latest News The Gamma Empire announced its official comeback, and the Gamma Empire called on the major star sea races to unite together to fight against the Zerg. Special Express The Golden Galaxy, where the Jean clan is located, is the only star sea race that survived the impact of the Zerg. Statistics of Zerg Disaster this Zerg invasion mainly occurred in the Outer Sea, although there are signs of a large number of Zerg activities in the Inner Sea, so far not many planets have been invaded. A month has passed since the Zerg army was defeated. During this time, Shanghai Broadcasting reported all the news about the Zerg. According to broadcast sources, Su Yan also learned that Financial Star was not the only planet to be attacked. But the Financial Star is the only planet in the Outer Sea that has been invaded by the Zerg and has not been occupied. Of course, if it weren't for Su Yan's treatment, the current Financial Star should also become a hotbed for Zerg incubation. In this month's time, the Jean clan has completed the basic reconstruction of the Financial Star. Although the current Financial Star is still full of ruins, at least it can function normally. Su Yan stopped in the Silver Star Harbor, waiting for the ship repair work to end. Because of the killing of several nobles of the Jean clan before, the Jean clan was quite critical of Su Yan's behavior. But does Su Yan care? He doesn't care, now that his ship has been upgraded, he can go to the Devil's Triangle at any time. The Golden Galaxy was just a springboard for him to enter the Inner Sea. After today, the maintenance work of the Moon-class cruiser is almost done. Su Yan was sitting in the bar, and the Marvin robot was still skillfully bringing him a drink. Seeing the skilled movements of the Marvin robot, Su Yan also touched his chin. I heard that when the mechanical priest was in the Zerg jumping gang, they got a lot of Zerg corpses. I don't know what these mechanical priests want to make out of those Zerg corpses. Of course, Su Yan didn't ask. If nothing is researched, these Zerg corpses can at least be transformed into some more powerful machine servants. If he develops something good to deal with the Zerg, he will certainly make a profit. However, Su Yan also had a headache for some of the behaviors of these mechanical priests. He once went to the room where the mechanical priests were, and found their own portraits hanging in their rooms. These fanatical believers, after systematic transformation, transferred their fanatical beliefs to Su Yan. They regard Su Yan as a god and dedicate everything they have to Su Yan. But Su Yan also complained miserably about their behavior. 
After all, they were worshipped as gods, and it was difficult for ordinary people to bear this kind of enthusiasm. In addition, these mechanical priests believe that machines have their own machine souls. This made the pilots not feel good about their fellow soldiers. Because these guys are always sneaking into the Titan hangar, once they find that the Titan is not properly maintained, they will angrily rebuke those Titans who don't care for themselves. When the Iron Pilots were fighting, they were afraid of hanging up their own Titans. However, these mechanical priests are usually rambunctious, but Su Yan's fleet has improved a lot because of the powerful logistics capabilities of these mechanical priests. The wrist blade blades of the Predators and the space battle suits of the pilots are all from the hands of the mechanical priests. Su Yan took a sip of the drink and exhaled. Get ready to leave tomorrow for the next galaxy. At this moment, Su Yan's technology watch also popped up a message prompt. Ding, someone is visiting. Immediately afterwards, the camera at the hatch also captured the appearance of the visitor. After Su Yan saw the familiar face, she also said lightly, let her come in. The person who came was Jean Luo from the Jean clan, Su Yan was a little curious, this time should be the time when the Jean clan worked hard to repair the financial star. What is she doing here when she is so busy? But Jean Luo is her previous financial master after all, if there is no funds from her. It is impossible for his own fleet to complete a comprehensive upgrade, and the face that should be given should still be given. Not long after, Jean Luo also came to the bar of the Hyperion. Su Yan snapped his fingers, and the Marvin robot was also skillfully handing a cocktail. When are you going to leave the Gold Galaxy? Tomorrow. 99. After hearing Su Yan's answer, Jean Luo was also a little surprised. So fast? At the same time, Jean Luo breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, she came to find Su Yan today, otherwise she would not even have the chance to meet tomorrow. Thinking of this, Jean Luo felt sad in her heart. Su Yan hadn't contacted her for a while, could it be something inside the Jean clan that made him feel uncomfortable? Jean Luo secretly sighed in her heart, but it's a pity that she doesn't hold much power within the Jean clan. After drinking a glass of wine, Jean Luo also made up her mind to mend the gap between the Jean clan and Su Yan. Su Yan's potential will definitely shine in the sea of stars in the future, Jean Luo believes that he will never become an unknown person. Therefore, Jean Luo also took out a purple gold card, but it was different from the gold clan purple card that Lin Qingyue took out before. The purple gold card in front of him shows a pattern of the Big Dipper. Su Yan, I know you saved the financial star. This is the supreme VIP card of the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce, which contains 10 billion star coins that I have prepared for you. The Seven Stars Chamber of Commerce is the sister force of our Jean clan, and its main scope of activities is in the Devil's Triangle. The Devil's Triangle is located in the center of the Inner Sea and the Outer Sea, and the forces inside are intricate. You can use this Seven Star card to go to the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce, and the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce will provide you with some help when you see this card. 39. Seven Star Chamber of Commerce? Su Yan had heard of the name of this Chamber of Commerce. The scope of activities of the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce is mainly in the Devil's Triangle. Although it is small in size, the things it sells are inland treasures that can hardly be encountered in the open sea. Therefore, in the ranking of Chambers of Commerce, the wealth evaluation of the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce is even higher than that of the Jean Hai Chamber of Commerce of the Jean Clan. Unexpectedly, the Jean Clan still has such a relationship, which can provide a lot of help for him to enter the Devil's Triangle. Su Yan also took the Seven Star card and thanked him. After Su Yan took over the Seven Star card, Jean Luo also opened her mouth to remind. After entering the Devil's Triangle, the frequency of encountering psionicists will become more frequent. I suggest that you buy a psionic technique for self-defense after you arrive at the Seven Star Chamber of Commerce. Although your ship is powerful, your personal strength is equally important in the Inland Sea. Baying also told Su Yan about this question before. Su Yan also wanted to go to Baying to learn psionics, but Baying told Su Yan that her psionics were skills that consumed a lot of psionic energy. If Su Yan uses it, it is likely to be drained directly. 
Having said that, Su Yan also gave up the idea of learning psionics from Baiying. If the sign-in system could sign in a psionic technique for him, he would save himself a lot of trouble. After talking about the topic of psionics, Jin Xing also asked Su Yan. Have you thought about the name and emblem of your fleet? 35. After entering the Devil's Triangle, you will encounter many fleets. If you can play your name in advance, you may be able to avoid some trouble. 35. Fleet name and fleet logo? Su Yan really didn't think about it. After all, some time ago, he was alone, and before he knew it, he had already pulled up a powerful fleet. Thinking of this, Su Yan also touched his chin, thinking about the name of the fleet. After thinking for a moment, Su Yan thought of a name. After thinking about it, the name of my fleet is called, Long Ying, Fleet. 35. Su Yan didn't know that in the future, the name of the Long Ying Fleet would resound throughout the entire Xinghai. The moment everyone heard this name, they would feel a burst of fear. Of course, these are all later stories. After Jean Luo heard the name, she also showed a smile. Now that the name has been determined, you can give me your fleet logo at that time, and I will ask the boatman in the dock to paint it for you. Speaking of this, Jean Luo also looked at Su Yan. She is sure that the name of Longin fleet will spread throughout the entire Xinghai in the future. Su Yan, he has this strength. Soon after, all ships under Su Yan's command were also sprayed with a unified, of, red dragon head logo. Looking at the brand new ship painting, Su Yan nodded with satisfaction. When the painting of the ship was finished, it was time for Su Yan to leave the Golden Galaxy. Jean Luo stood at the Silver Star Harbor, watching Su Yan's longing fleet slowly lift off into the sky. In the end, they started the space transition and disappeared into the vast sea of stars. Watching Su Yan's fleet slowly disappear into the starry sky, Jean Luo also closed her eyes and took a deep breath. But when she opened her eyes again, her eyes were full of fire of ambition. At this time, she once again changed back to one of the rulers of the Jean clan. The Jean clan must be rectified, zero. Having said that, Jean Luo also walked towards her spaceship. And Su Yan didn't know at this time, because of him, the entire Jean clan was going to go through a huge change. At the moment, Su Yan is on the ship, adjusting the target of the next galaxy. The next target is being locked, colorful galaxy, Qingguang Star. With the help of the Golden Clan Stargate, after passing through the Stargate, you can reach the colorful galaxy far away from the Golden Galaxy. The next journey requires Su Yan to constantly pass through the Stargate to reach the final destination, the Devil's Triangle. Otherwise, it will take him at least 10 years to reach the Devil's Triangle, Colorful Galaxy, Blue Light Star Outer Space. With the appearance of a streamer, the Hyperion appeared first. Immediately afterwards, other ships gradually appeared around the Hyperion like a streamer. Su Yan looked at the Blue Light Star in front of him, and also turned on the planet scanning function of the ship. Blue Light Star, Terrestrial Planet, Temperate Climate Planet. The environment on Qingguang Star is suitable for biological reproduction. The most important thing is that there are many alien beasts living on this planet. After Su Yan inspected the planet's environment, he also chose to land the fleet on this planet. After a period of interstellar voyage, the food and water sources on their ships also have a certain consumption. When you are not sure whether there is a place for supply in the next galaxy, it is definitely not a problem to stop and replenish resources. Under the command of Su Yan, the ship also landed towards the surface of Qingguang Star. After a while, Su Yan found a lake. All the ships landed next to the lake, and then many Marvin robots also walked out of the ships and began to load the lake water into the ships. The predator naturally scattered around to hunt. Ding, check in location detected, King Wangxing. Do you want to sign in? Sign in. Su Yan also signed in decisively. Ding, congratulations on obtaining the psionic technique, gravity control, and obtaining 1000 Thunder Sky Gang. 1000 Thunder Sky Gangs have appeared in the arsenal and can be awakened at any time. Psionics? Su Yan's face also showed a hint of joy after seeing the sign in reward this time. I just need a powerful psionic technique for my body. 
Unexpectedly, this time the system directly arranged a psionic technique for him. Gravity control, S-level psionics, can control the gravity field of an object or a certain area, the larger the operating range, the more precise the 000 density, the more huge the consumption of psionic energy. Su Yan looked at the introduction of gravity manipulation, and also urged the psionic energy in the body to start to perform gravity manipulation. I saw the wine glass in my hand, in the absence of gravity, it can be suspended in the air. In the next second, Su Yan gave it a hundred times gravity. Snapped. The wine glass fell directly on the ground and turned into glass fragments, the speed of which was like a bullet falling vertically. Su Yan exerted gravity again, stepped on the ground, and the glass fragments on the ground were easily shaken by Su Yan without gravity. The next second, Su Yan waved his hand, and the glass fragments were shot out like bullets. In the absence of gravity, Su Yan only needs a small amount of force to turn an object into a bullet and launch it. After experimenting for a while, Su Yan also opened his attribute panel again. Name Su Yan. Race, Humans of the Solar System. Psionic value 3500 slash 4000. Strength 70. Physique 70. Spirit 80. Skills, Gravity Control, Psionic Control, Psionic Perception, A-Class Ship Driving Skills. Ships held, S-Class Hyperion, A-Class White Knight, B-Class Valkyrie. In such a short time, he had already consumed 500 psionic energy points. If you have a huge psionic value like the White Warbler, maybe even the gravity of the entire planet can be manipulated. Perhaps when his gravity manipulation technique reaches the extreme, he can pull an entire planet with his bare hands as a weapon. The potential of gravity manipulation definitely doesn't stop there. Thinking of this, Su Yen is also in a good mood. DBCG, now that I am a true psionicist, I will be able to protect myself well after entering the Inland Sea in the future. After all, strength is confidence. In the Inner Sea, powerful psychers are revered and revered by all. Su Yen put away his psionic energy, and then walked out of the Hyperion and came to the surface of the planet. Looking at the busy Marvin robots around, it is estimated that it will take about a day to complete the supply of the entire fleet. Taking this time, Su Yen intends to hang out on the surface of this planet. Turning on the technology watch, Su Yen also detects the oxygen content in the air. Detecting the oxygen content of Qingguang Star. The oxygen content of Qingguang Star was detected to be 20%. After some testing, Su Yen also removed the spacesuit on her body. The air on Blue Star is similar to that of Blue Star, so Su Yen can breathe here even without her spacesuit. After taking off the spacesuit, Su Yen also took a deep breath. Fresh air, since he left Blue Star, he has never breathed such fresh air. Su Yen touched his nose, this azure star is a good planet for human beings. However, this region is too far from the solar system, it is estimated that it is difficult for humans to come here. After all, there are hundreds of millions of stars in the universe, and it is impossible for anyone to fall on this planet like him. Rumbling. Just when Su Yen was about to relax on this blue light star, there was a roar in the sky. Hearing this voice, Su Yen couldn't help but look up to the sky. When he saw that a gem ship made of various gems was slowly descending in the sky, a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. Gem ship? Good guy. He originally thought that the golden glory of the Jean clan was already the most luxurious ship he had ever seen. But compared with the falling ship in front of him, the Golden Glory is still low-key. The whole body of this ship is made of gems, and the whole ship is like a huge gem. Su Yan was a little surprised, this is the ship of the Star Sea Race, so luxurious. Such a gem ship, just the hull of the ship can sell for a lot of money in the market. Looking at the direction in which the gem ship was slowly falling, Su Yan also looked at the sky. The tail flame of the gem ship drew a trace in the sky. The gem ship looked like it was destroyed by something, and then fell to the planet. Thinking of this, Su Yen also immediately gathered his troops and ran towards the direction where the gem ship fell. Passing through the jungle, they also came to the place where the gem ship crashed. 
This place is full of fires from the fall of the gem ship. Seeing this, Su Yan was also more careful, the lethality of the ship's explosion was not low. Afterwards, they kept approaching the direction of the gem ship. After confirming that there was no danger, Su Yan also entered the interior of the gem ship through the gap. When Su Yan came to the bridge of the gem ship, she couldn't help but be shocked by the luxurious scene in front of her. The entire bridge is full of extremely rare gems, and even the control panel is made of a single piece of jade. Looking around, Su Yan couldn't help frowning slightly. Why is there no biological control in this ship? Except for the large crystal gem scattered on the ground, the ship could not feel the breath of life. Is it an unmanned cargo ship? No, even an unmanned cargo ship should at least have maintenance personnel. Besides, this ship is a gem ship, isn't the owner of this ship afraid of being targeted? Su Yan's eyes fell on the ship's control panel. Perhaps in the ship's log, Su Yan could find some useful information. When Su Yan investigated the gem ship through the ship log, he couldn't help but gasp. Good guy, Su Yan never imagined that Daekiang Singhai really has all kinds of races. This gem ship is actually an extremely rare race called the Jewel Man. The gem people are a race born from various crystals and gems, and their bodies are composed of various crystal gems. But what is even more shocking is that their technology does not know how to develop. It is actually possible to use gems and crystals to create a spaceship that can perform space jumps. This race can be said to be the richest man in the sea of stars, after all, the planets they are born are all rich planets with rich minerals. But it is precisely because of this that these gem people also have a rough fate. If you encounter a fairly friendly race, it's fine. Once you encounter an interstellar pirate, you will basically die. There are countless gem people lost in the sea of stars every year, but even so, is this magical race still not extinct? After all, their bodies are made of gems and crystals. Su Yen glanced at the crystal and gem fragments on the ground, and at this time he finally understood why he couldn't feel the breath of life. These crystal fragments and gem fragments on the ground are the dead gem people. Hiss. I actually encountered such a rare species. The rarity of gem people in the sea of stars can be called giant pandas. The interstellar pirates even refer to it as a moving treasure among the stars. Now, Su Yan understands why the gem ship was destroyed. Boo! Just then, the ground trembled. Su Yan passed through the broken window of the bridge and saw several spaceships landed near the gem ship. Seeing these ships flying straight towards the jewel-like side, Su Yan also understood that they might have destroyed the jewel ship. At this time, the spaceship also landed on the open space near the gem ship. I saw a few frogmen come out of the spaceship, wearing alloy armor and holding laser weapons in their hands. The gem ship landed here, quack. Huh. Those gem people should have been shattered by the impact of the landing. Now, let's go to recycle the eternal energy coordinates, quack. Don't let go of those gem man's shards. Those crystals and gems can sell a lot of things, quack. Huh. You idiot, eternal energy is much more precious than those crystal gems. Eternal energy? Hearing those frogmen's dialogue, Su Yan's eyes also lit up. Eternal energy. It is recognized as the most efficient energy source by all races in the Star Sea. An eternal energy stone can almost keep a ship in a state of eternal energy. So far, no one knows how the eternal energy appeared. But every eternal energy, when it appears, will definitely cause the entire star sea to vibrate. I heard that the Annihilation Star Weapon of the Ancient Empire uses an eternal energy stone as the core. Otherwise, no energy can support the powerful output power of the J-Star Weapon. It seems that the ships that this gem man rides on are not only coveted by frogmen because of their own physique. At the same time, their ships also have clues about eternal energy. Su Yan also immediately came to the console and began to retrieve all the information in the gem man ship. But, unfortunately, Su Yan didn't find any information about eternal energy in it. And at this time, those frogmen also came to the gem ship. Ah, the ships of these gems are really luxurious. 
This ship can be exchanged for hundreds of millions of stars just by selling it in the market, quack. Stop talking nonsense, our goal is eternal energy, and eternal energy is priceless. Wait a minute, someone's been here. At this time, one of the frogmen also found footprints around the gem ship. After seeing these footprints, the other frogmen also reacted and stopped talking. Several frogmen held laser weapons and slowly walked into the cabin of the gem ship. And just then, one of the frogmen saw a shadow. Without further ado, the frogman shot directly. The laser bullet hit the figure directly. Snapped. For a while, the flame splattered, and the laser bullet fell on the thunder warrior, and the energy shield blocked the laser bullet. After seeing the figure of the thunder warrior, the leader of the frogman captain also flashed a killing intent in his eyes. Unexpectedly, there are people on this planet who are here before them. Kill them. This ship is the prey of our frogmen. The other frogmen also fired immediately, and a large number of laser bullets fell on the Thunder Warrior's energy shield. The Thunder Warrior looked at the frogmen in front of him, and the eyebrows behind the power armor were also slightly wrinkled. What the hell are these frogmen doing? With this firepower, even his energy shield can't be broken. After a round of shooting, many frogmen saw that their bullets could not even break through the defense of the Thunder Warrior and their expressions changed. Immediately afterwards, the Thunder Warrior pulled out the bolt gun from his waist. When those frogmen saw the caliber of the bolt gun, they couldn't help but gasped. What kind of firearm is this, with such a large caliber? Boom! A bolter fell directly on a frogman. In an instant, the frogman flew out backwards. The armor on his body was directly penetrated by the bomb and the strong impact shattered the insides of the frogman. Seeing the miserable state of their companions, the expressions of the other frogmen also changed. Hiss. What kind of terrifying warrior is this, both defense and firepower are much stronger than them. And at this time, those frogmen also understood. With the current ones, they are simply not enough to cause damage to the thunder warriors in front of them. Thinking of this, the frogman captain also immediately shouted, Retreat! Retreat! The frogman who had long wanted to retreat also immediately withdrew from the range of the gem ship. Then, they came to the vicinity of the spaceship. Numerous frogmen returned to the spaceship and came directly to the arsenal. Those tin cans have energy shields, we have to use more powerful weapons. Load those armor-piercing rockets that deal with the battlefield. Report to the commander that we have encountered a large enemy and need heavy fire support. 35. The frogman captain gave orders in an orderly manner, and several frogmen took out bazooka, armor-piercing shells, and other heavy fire weapons from the arsenal. Afterwards, a frogman also immediately used his own technology bracers to contact the frogman fleet in outer space. In the space, a green frogman flagship is suspended in space. The frogman commander also received a distress signal from the ground troops in the bridge. A bunch of rubbish, they can't even do this little thing. After hearing the news of the ground troops, the frogman commander was also furious. I thought it would be a simple matter to let this team go to recover the eternal energy coordinates on the gem ship. Unexpectedly, Jin Yao Jin was killed halfway along the way. Thinking of this, the frogman commander also burst into flames. That is eternal energy, something called a priceless treasure. If it is messed up by that group of trash, he will definitely become a shame for the entire frogman race. Thinking of this, the frogman commander also ordered. Send 10 more teams to the ground to support them. By the way, bring the heavy firepower armor developed by our frogmen. Wait, it's not enough insurance, just in case, 10 more fire bombers are called to support them. 99. The frogman commander did not believe that such firepower would be enough to kill even a thousand enemies. How can there be warriors of other races on a small azure star? Could it be a ship that happened to stop on this planet? Such a chance can be met by yourself. But the frogman commander can be sure that no matter the opponent is the warrior of the star sea race, they will definitely not be able to withstand the firepower they mobilize. On the ground, the frogman team also received support signals from the fleet. 
After getting the reply from the Frogman commander, the Frogman team was also excited. Brothers, our support is coming soon. No matter how strong those iron cans are, they will be smashed by us in the face of our troops' support. Take our weapons, we are the brave Frogman team. Boom. Just when the Frogman team was still inspiring, the door of the spacecraft was directly slashed by a power sword. Immediately, the flames splashed everywhere, and the Thunder Warrior raised the power sword in his hand again. Brush. The power sword directly pierced the door of the spacecraft. Afterwards, the Thunder Warrior began to use the power sword to cut the gate of the spaceship. The flames splashed everywhere, and the alarms in the ship sounded one after another. When the Frogman squad saw this scene, their faces turned pale. Is this man the devil? They are all hiding in the spaceship, how can they still chase after them? At this time, Su Yen finally found the location of the cargo hold of the Gem Man ship. He searched all the places in the Gem Man ship, but found no trace of eternal energy. The only place not being searched now is this warehouse, Su Yen also walked into the warehouse. There were a lot of goods scattered in the warehouse, most of which were ores and crystals. Seeking flowers. But Su Yen was not interested in these things at all, and he continued to fumble in the warehouse. Finally, when he found a locked safe, he was sure what he wanted was in it. Without further ado, Su Yen violently demolished it, and the contents of the safe fell into Su Yan's hands. Inside is a treasure map showing the location of a relic. In addition to this treasure map, there is also a star sea compass inside. The star sea compass records the galaxy and planet where the eternal energy is located, and the treasure map records the specific location of the eternal energy. Su Yan also put away the Xinghai compass and the treasure map. If you can really find the eternal energy, the gems and crystals of this ship are less than one ten thousandth of the eternal energy. Once, there was an eternal energy that was auctioned in the Sea of Stars. In the end, it was a planet lord who paid the price of 10 paradise planets to photograph that eternal energy. You must know that only one of the hundreds of millions of planets can be born into a paradise planet. A paradise planet, its value is already inestimable. Zero, zero, zero. only 10 paradise planets took pictures of the eternal energy, which is enough to show the preciousness of the eternal energy. Unexpectedly, I just landed on Qingguang Star to supply supplies, and I actually encountered such a good thing. Boom. At this moment, Su Yan felt the ground tremble, what's going on outside? Are those frogmen calling? Wrong. I saw that the frogman's equipment was not very well equipped, and if it was the frogman squad, it would not be able to break through the Thunder Warrior's defense line. But at this moment, there was another loud bang. The ground trembled again. Su Yan frowned slightly and walked out immediately. When he came to the outside world, he saw that several frogman squads were besieging the Thunder Warriors. With the advantage of equipment and numbers, these frogman squads are also besieging a Thunder Warrior. But even a Thunder Warrior has the strength of 10,000 enemies. At this moment, Su Yan opened his mouth and shouted, Come back! Hearing this sentence, the Thunder Warrior stopped attacking. And those frogman squads also looked at Su Yen. When they saw that Su Yen was walking out of the Gem Man ship, the frogman squad was also nervous. Humans, this gem ship is the prey of our frogmen. Be wise, get out of here quickly, we can still let you live. 35. The frogman team on the opposite side also became very rampant due to the advantages of numbers and equipment. Seeing this, Su Yan also chuckled. Afterwards, he clapped his hands, and several Thunder Warriors walked out of the Gem Man's ship. Seeing such a large number of Thunder Warriors, those Frogman squads were stunned. A single Thunder Warrior has already made them feel a bit tricky, and there are so many such tricky Iron Armor Warriors. The Frogman squad leader swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and the team members next to him also said, Captain, their number seems to be a bit large. Don't be afraid, our support will be here soon. 35. As soon as the voice fell, several airdrop capsules fell from the sky. After seeing these airdrop capsules, the frogman was also overjoyed. Human, it's too late for you to regret it now. Our support is here. 
you will pay the price for fighting against the frogmen. Kuei, if you're enjoying my content, please consider donating a coffee. Or checking out my shirts on Tee Public. Puff. The airdrop compartment opened, and the frogman warriors, driving the heavy firepower mecha, walked out of the airdrop compartment. One after another, other frogman fighters drove out the mecha. When these frogman warriors driving mecha saw the thunder warriors in front of them, they were also slightly taken aback. Just so many people? His eyes swept over, and there were only about a hundred thunder warriors in sight. A frogman team has nearly a hundred people, and a ten-member team is a thousand frogman warriors. In addition, the small spaceship will be loaded with some heavy weapons, and they can't kill a hundred people with this configuration? Oh, your ground team is too weak, you can't even kill a hundred people? I thought you were in danger and still needed the support of heavy weapons. The commander also sent them bomber support, which is a bit of a fuss. 99, okay, don't worry about those rubbish, then we will deal with these guys, and save those guys in the bomber squad complaining for a while. The members of the frogman ground team flushed with anger, they have seen the power of those iron cans, and their weapons can't even break the opponent's energy shield. On the contrary, 000, the opponent can not only easily destroy the gate of their spaceship, even, the bolt guns in their hands, one shot is enough to smash them together with their armor. How to fight this? They swept away, and couldn't even touch the opponent's armor. But the opponent's one-shot attack, directly pierced them together with the armor. The members of the frogman team also looked at the members of the mecha unit and did not speak, and the frogman of the mecha troop also snorted, coldly. In their opinion, these ground team members were completely ashamed, so they did not dare to speak. The frogman squad leader of the mecha troop also sneered, now it's too late even if you want to escape. The heavy machine guns in our hands will beat you into a sieve. After all, the frogman team leader urged the mecha, and the heavy machine guns on both sides of the mecha spurted a tongue of flame, and a large number of bullets hit a thunder warrior like a torrential rain. Da da da. Other mechas also aimed at the nearest Thunder Warrior. However, when the bullet landed on the Thunder Warrior, they were stunned. Su Yan watched as those bullets landed on the energy shields around the Thunder Warrior, not even touching the Thunder Warrior's armor. Seeing this scene, Su Yan also laughed. This is what you call heavy firepower? Are you kidding? 35. Hearing this sentence, the team leader of the mecha army also blushed. In shame, the frogman squad leader of the mecha unit also turned his gun and aimed at Su Yen. Damn, what right do you have to be arrogant as a human being? You don't have armor, watch Lousy beat you into a sieve. Da da da. The heavy machine gun once again vented its endless anger at Su Yen. Su Yen watched the bullets come, and the corners of her mouth rose slightly. Gravity control. 10,000 times the gravity brush. For a time, all the bullets landed on the ground in an almost vertical posture after entering 10 meters around Su Yan's body. Seeing this scene, those frogmen reacted immediately. Psyker, he is a psyker. 35. In the eyes of all races in Xinghai, the psionicists are the words of the strong. Su Yan picked up a bolter. Gravity control, zero gravity. Boom. Accompanied by a huge impact, it came from above the explosive gun. Su Yan's wrists went numb from the shock. The next second, the zero gravity bolt gun charged directly towards a mecha. The bolt gun without the influence of gravity, like a meteor, directly attacked the mecha with infinite power. In the absence of the influence of gravity, the bomb retains a large amount of kinetic energy. The power of this explosive bomb is at least 10 times stronger than that of the Thunder Warriors. Boom, the bomb directly penetrated the protective layer of the mecha and hit the frogman in the armor. The frogman squad leader of the mecha army suddenly turned pale when he saw the scene. At this moment, a thunder warrior came to them. Looking at the thunder warrior, who was much shorter than his mecha, the frogman squad leader burst into flames. How dare you approach my mecha, thinking of this, the frogman squad leader manipulated the mecha and grabbed the thunder warrior. But in the next second, the Thunder Warrior drew out the power sword. 
brush. A sword fell, and the right arm of the Mecca was directly cut off. The Frogman Squad leader was stunned, what kind of monster is this Temo? Brush. The Thunder Warrior stabbed into the cockpit of the Mecca with another sword. Seeing the power sword so close at hand, the Frogman Squad leader was directly scared to pee. What monster is this? The Mecca that I am proud of, in front of them, is no different from scrap iron, wow. The cockpit of the Mech was forcibly torn apart by the Thunder Warrior. The Thunder Warrior stood there, and the Frogman driver of the Mecha unit was pale. They never thought it would end up like this. The Thunder Warriors dismantled all their Mechas into scrap iron with a crushing attitude. Seeing this scene, the Frogman Warriors of the ground team also shrank their heads, their faces pale. Monsters? These guys must be monsters. Hard-resistant heavy machine guns, tearing mechas, apart from monsters, what other creatures can do this kind of thing? But at this moment, the roar of bombers came from the sky. Several bombers descended from the sky, carrying a large number of heavy weapons. When the bomber squad saw the situation on the ground, they couldn't help but be at a loss. What's the situation? When they received the commander's order, they were also confused. The mecha troops and 10 ground teams have already been dispatched, and there is nothing they can't take down. But now, after seeing the situation at the scene, they couldn't help but look solemn. This looks a little bad. This is the Falcon Bomber Squad, what happened to the ground forces? In order to further confirm the situation, the frogman captain of the bomber squad also contacted the ground troops. And after hearing the voice of the bomber squadron, the ground troops also burst into tears. The squad leader of the ground force also hurriedly cried, we need support, the other side is a monster. Hearing the voice of the squad leader of the ground force, the leader of the bomber squad was also nervous. Is it so serious? 10 ground troop squads, supported by heavy mech squads. Even so, can't they solve a hundred people? Although I couldn't believe the result in my heart, the Frogman Squad leader of the Bomber Squad also gave an order. I'll start heavy howitzers and prepare for air support. 35. Pay attention to the target mission, those guys in iron armor are our target. This attack must kill the enemy and never give them any chance to counterattack. After all, the voices of other Frogman pilots also came from the communication channel. Captain, don't worry at all, can these guys still fly? Yes, as long as we have air superiority, they are a bunch of targets. 35. These mecha troops and ground troops are too wasteful, we have to come. Many frogman pilots did not pay attention to those thunder warriors at all. No matter how much they leave, can they still fly to the sky? Boom! A grenade landed directly on one of the thunder warriors. The huge impact force made the Thunder Warrior take a few steps back. Immediately afterwards, several grenades bombarded the Thunder Warriors. Su Yan looked at the bombers constantly circling and shooting in the sky, his eyes narrowed slightly. The Thunder soldiers did not have air-to-air -air means, and even if the bolt gun faced a bomber at such a distance, it was more than enough. Seeing the Thunder Warriors being submerged by artillery fire, the remaining Frogman Warriors also have a lot of confidence. It turns out that these invincible tin cans also have weaknesses. Seeing that the Thunder Warriors were suppressed, the Frogman Warriors also cheered. Su Yen glanced at the Frogman Warriors and chuckled, Shake people, I will too. As soon as the words fell, a thousand Thunder Tian gang walked out of the dense forest. Each of them wears heavy armor that is immune to most melee attacks. In addition to the heavy armor, the most conspicuous thing in their hands is the revolving machine gun. The mechanical armor is in good condition, ready to attack at any time. Thousands of Thunder Sky Gang are also ready to go, and the revolving machine guns in their hands are already hungry and thirsty. Su Yan pointed to the bombers in the sky and said indifferently, shoot them down. Hearing this sentence, many thunderbolts were also ordered. The revolver gun in his hand aimed at the bombers in the 2.6 sky. The pilots among those bombers couldn't help but ridicule after seeing the actions of Xuan Lei Tian Gang. Hee hee, do you really think you can hit us with a gun? Before he finished speaking, 
The revolving machine gun in Xu Lei Tiangong's hand began to spin wildly. Da da da. The next second, the revolving machine gun spewed out a terrifying flame, and countless bullets hit the bombers in the sky like a torrential rain. One, two, three. A thousand Thunder Tian gangs carried Gatling-like revolving machine guns and vented their firepower into the sky at an extremely terrifying speed. The terrifying firepower directly hit a bomber. Crackling. Almost instantly, the wings on both sides of the bomber were smashed into sieves by bullets. Even the wings were directly smashed to pieces by the endless bullets. Boom. The first bomber went down. Then, the second, the third. Thunder and Tian gangs used the revolving machine guns to let the frogmen understand what is called real firepower. The dense rain of bullets made those bombers unable to resist. Bomber after bomber fell, blooming a flower of fire on the ground. In less than a while, the bombers above the sky were actually strafed by the powerful firepower of the revolving machine guns. Su Yan looked at the fallen bombers one after another, and a smug smile appeared on his face. This is the Thunder Sky Gang, known as the Gatling God of War. The revolver gun in hand is similar to the Gatling, but the revolver gun has a longer range and stronger power. With such powerful firepower, they can strafe air units even in the face of them. In the face of the torrential rain-like firepower, even the fighter jets flying in the air could not resist. The remaining frogmen were pale, and even the bombers flying in the sky were shot down. Next, what should they do? Mechas were torn by hand, bombers were strafed. What kind of terrorist force is this? At this moment, one of the frogman squad leaders picked up the communication device and wanted to contact the commander in the sky. But Su Yen also saw his movements, and saw Su Yen tap his index finger. The next second, the frogman team captain felt that the communication device in his hand suddenly turned into a boulder. Boom. The small communication device fell to the ground, but a puff of dust splashed. The frogman squad leader who wanted to report, the palm of his hand was directly crushed into a patty by the huge weight of the communication device. Su Yen glanced at the remaining frogman troop, and then said, drag all these frogmen back, and change the mechanical priests into machine servants. 5. As soon as these words came out, those frogmen turned pale. Transform into a robot? This is simply worse than killing them. Devil 31. This guy in front of him is an out-and-out -out devil, some of the frogmen wanted to escape, but he had to face the sharp power swords of the Thunder Warriors and the revolving machine guns of the Thunder Sky Gang. Soon, these frogmen were captured by Su Yen. In the frogman fleet in outer space, the frogman commander waited for a long time, but did not receive any news from the ground troops. Not only the ground troops, but also the mecha and bomber units have no news. Damn? Could it be that they were all wiped out by the opposing team? This is impossible? According to the information of the frogman squad, there are only a hundred people on the opposite side. What kind of waves can an army of 100 make? Report. The communication channel of the first team of frogmen has been interrupted. Report. The communication channel of the 3rd Frogman Mech Squad has been interrupted. Report. The communication channel of the 10th team of Frogman has been interrupted. Report. The communication channel of Frogman 4th Air Team has been interrupted. The Frogman commander was silent. The interruption of communication means that the Frogman team has all been killed. In other words, none of the Frogman teams he sent out survived. How is this possible? The opponent was nothing but an army of only a hundred people. The troops sent out by himself can resist the attack of legions of more than 10,000 people. Thinking of this, the frogman commander gritted his teeth for a while. He thought that this mission could be completed easily, but who knew that the troops he sent out were wiped out one by one. The frogman commander almost gnashed his teeth to give orders. All ships are ready to land on the surface of Qingguang. 35. I want to see what kind of elite troops can wipe out all the frogman troops I sent out. The frogman fleet in space also began to move. With the sacrifice of one army after another, the frogman commander couldn't sit still.
The Frogman fleet began to move towards the surface of Qingguang. At this time, Su Yan on the surface of Qingguang also saw the fleet of frogmen slowly descending. These frogman fleets actually came down. Su Yan smiled, but he knew it too. If it were him, and the eternal energy he got was taken away by someone like this, he would definitely be in hot pursuit with his own Hyperion. After all, it is a priceless eternal energy. Lin Qingyue stood next to Su Yan, and when she saw the ships where the frogmen landed, she also asked, curiously. Next, are we going to attack those frogmen fleets? Hearing this sentence, Su Yan also knocked on Lin Qingyue's little head. If not? Even if Su Yan does not attack these frogman fleets, once these frogman fleets find that the eternal energy falls on them, they will definitely come to pursue them. Moreover, on this huge blue light star, apart from the frogman and the dead gem man, there is only one fleet of himself. Those frogmen only need to investigate a little to understand that the coordinates of the eternal energy are on themselves. Instead of passively defending, it is better to take the initiative. Su Yan also walked into the Hyperion, and Lin Qingyue touched her little head and pouted her lips in dissatisfaction. After Su Yan came to the bridge, he found that Ling Bing had also been sitting in the command position to investigate the information of the other ship. The opponent's flagship is an A-class ship with medium defense, but three Yamato cannons are enough to destroy it. Besides that, their frigate organization is two B-class fireboats and 20 D-class frigates. The firepower of the two B-class fire ships may have an impact on us, and we can give priority to destroying them in battle. At this time, Ling Bing had already analyzed the gap between the enemy and us. Even the connected battle models are already built. That is to say, in the simulation battle alone, Su Yan's fleet has destroyed the frogman's fleet countless times. Su Yan smiled, and then said to Ling Bing, this battle is left to you. Hearing this sentence, Ling Bing also evoked a heartwarming smile on the corner of his mouth. Since you said so, I'm welcome. After all, Ling Bing also sat in the captain's seat where Su Yan originally sat. Su Yan also did not speak and sat in the command position. For this frogman fleet, Su Yan didn't take it to heart at all. Based on his current fleet establishment, destroying this frogman fleet can be said to be a crushing trend. Exactly, this battle can be handed over to Ling Bing to practice. The so-called chief mate should help the captain at such a time. The Hyperion slowly lifted off, and the surrounding ships also started their engines. A large number of ships rose from the jungle, and at this time, the Frogman fleet also noticed the fleet on Su Yan's side. The Frogman commander looked at the flag on the fleet in front of him, and he had never seen it before. Where did the unknown fleet emerge from? But at this moment, the huge body of the Moon-class cruiser appeared in front of him. Hiss. After seeing the huge size of the Moon-class cruiser, the Frogman commander could not help but take a deep breath. This, what class of ship is this? He had never seen such a huge ship, its stature was comparable to the giant among the ships. But at this time, no matter how shocked the Frogman commander was, he had to calm down. I hadn't noticed before that there was still such a fleet on this Azure Star. It seemed that his ground troops were destroyed by members of this fleet. Although the ships on the opposite side are huge, in terms of number, the number of ships here is far greater than the number of the opposing fleet. The number represents firepower, and the Frogman commander immediately began to analyze the battlefield situation. The two huge ships must be the firepower output of their fleet, Focus on attacking these large ships first. The ship in the middle is actually an S-class ship, so it must be their flagship. As for the surrounding ships, they must be ordinary frigates, don't care. As soon as the words fell, ten Valkyrie fireboats rushed over directly. A large number of episode rockets fell on the two fireships of their fleet separately. Rumbling, in an instant, the two B-class fireboats turned into scrap iron. The speed is so fast and the firepower is fierce, before the frogman commander can react, their ship is blown up. Immediately afterwards, the guns of the flagship bow on the opposite side gathered a lot of energy radiance. Boom! 
a Yamato cannon directly hit the flagship of the Frogman fleet. Police 013, the ship suffered a serious blow. The Frogman commander suddenly paled, what the hell is he meowing? He had thought that the opposing fire ships would be concentrated on the two giant ships, but he did not expect that, whether it is Valkyrie or the Hyperion, the firepower output of the two ships is enough to damage his ship. Boom. The second Yamato cannon struck again. The Frogman commander directly fell to the ground with an unstable center of gravity. Can it fire again with such an attack? When he saw that the third-party Yamato cannon had begun to charge, the Frogman commander suddenly paled. This is not at all a peer-to-peer -peer fight. The firepower of the other party is more than ten times that of them, and they should escape without hesitation when they encounter it. But now, they have escaped the best of times. The Frogman commander seemed to see the end of his own death. Seeing the energy and brilliance of the Yamato cannon becoming more and more exuberant, the Frogman commander had a strong desire to survive in his heart. What I can't get, you can't get it either. Connect me to the cosmic broadcasting platform, and I will spread the news that the opposite side has obtained eternal energy. The Frogman commander pushed aside the Frogman warriors next to him, and then began to enter Su Yan's fleet appearance into the cosmic broadcast channel. Send. Boom. The third Yamato cannon penetrated directly through the opponent's flagship. The flagship of the Frogman fleet exploded directly. Without the command of the flagship, the remaining frigates are not afraid at all. After the Valkyrie strangled the remaining frigates, the Frogman frigates were all wiped out. On Su Yan's side, there was hardly any damage except for the Luna-class cruiser, who suffered a few shots. Tisk, these Frogman fleets are too bad, I thought they would last for a while. For this crushing level of enemy, Ling Bing said that she was not excited when she fought against the Zerg fleet in the Golden Galaxy. Su Yan also smiled, but at this moment, a message appeared in the Universe radio channel that caught his attention. Cosmos broadcast, this is the colorful galaxy King Wangxing, and there is a ship with a fleet logo leader, which has obtained the coordinate position of eternal energy. Cosmic radio channel, a public channel on which all star voyagers can post. There are countless Shanghai races that publish news on it every day, and there are hundreds of millions of messages appearing in the Universe Broadcast Channel almost every minute and every second. Of course, this news is no exception, almost turned around and drowned in a large amount of information. But by coincidence, Su Yen just saw the news. There is almost no need to guess, it must be that the Frogman fleet commander sent his fleet logo and eternal energy to the Universe Broadcast Channel before he died. Su Yen frowned slightly. He didn't expect that what really caused him trouble was the counterattack before his death. At this time, Su Yen also began to think. How many people will see the news just now? In the public channel with a huge base, the news of the Frogman Commander is like a grain of gold falling in the sea. Su Yen watched the cosmic broadcast channel with a huge amount of information, and the dense news poured out like a tide. Suddenly someone sent a message from the Universe Radio Channel. The news of eternal energy, have you just seen it? Oh, do you also believe the news in the public channels these days? Yes yes, I also said that I found the treasure of the legendary ship. Do you believe it? Just kidding. 35. This is the Cosmic Broadcast Channel, and you can guarantee 100% of the billions of news. 35. All Star Voyagers are denying the news. But at the same time, it also proved that they really saw the message sent by the Frogman Commander. After seeing these news, Su Yen also exhaled. Trouble. You've already been watched. The temptation of eternal energy is not something that ordinary people can resist. Now, maybe someone is already coming here. Su Yen also opened the Xinghai Compass immediately, and the spiral star of the spiral galaxy was displayed on it. The ruins that hold the eternal energy are up there. Thinking of this, Su Yen immediately urged the fleet to head towards the Whirlpool Galaxy. There is no time for them to stop here now. Qingyue, Ling Bing, Bei Ying, put away the pumping device and recall all the predators who were out hunting. 
39, hearing this instruction, Lin Qingyue also scratched her head in confusion. The replenishment of their fleet's water supply and food has not reached 100%, so why did Su Yan leave here in such a hurry? After leaving Qingguang Star, it is not easy to find the next supply planet. Ling Bing next to him also touched Lin Qingyue's head. Since Su Yan said to get out of here as soon as possible, he must have his reasons. There is enough water and food on our ships to last us to the next supply planet. Ling Bing also looked at Su Yan, and through Su Yan's slightly wrinkled brows, she speculated that it was probably related to the Frogman fleet, although I don't know what those Frogmen did. But seeing Su Yan frowning slightly, she knew that the threat they faced next was definitely not small. Soon, the predators who were on the search mission all returned one after another. After packing up everything, Su Yan also started the Hyperion immediately. The entire fleet slowly lifted off with the Hyperion. Not long after, the Hyperion rushed out of the atmosphere and came into the starry sky. Locking the target, Spiral Galaxy Spiral Star. Preparing for space transition, as the Hyperion turned into a streamer and disappeared in place, other ships also disappeared in place with it. And not long after Su Yan's fleet left the colorful galaxy, a fleet broke out of the space transition state and came to the surface of Qingguang Star. The markings on the ship's surface indicate that they belong to the famous Black Scorpion Mercenary Group. The Black Scorpion Mercenary Group is also quite famous in the outer seas. And the fleet of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group appeared here, for no other reason, it was the news they got in the Cosmos broadcast at that time. Eternal energy, this thing is a rare treasure that is priceless. If they can get this eternal energy, their Black Scorpion Mercenary Group can definitely sell it for a sky-high price. By that time, whether it is planetary territory or advanced ships, there will be no shortage of them. Boss, didn't you say that all that kind of news is a lie? A member of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group also scratched his head. He was a little puzzled. His boss clearly said in the cosmic broadcast that the news of eternal energy was false. But why does he have to make a special detour to come here now? The head of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group glanced at his subordinates and was not angry. How can someone so smart have such a stupid subordinate? If I don't say this news is false, what if other fleets come here to compete for eternal energy? That is eternal energy, even if it is one in a hundred billion credibility, we have to come and see. If it is true, the eternal energy falls into our hands, and our Black Scorpion mercenary group will be developed. But at this moment, in the distant space, another ship broke out of the space transition state. Immediately after that, other ships also left the space transition state one after another. The emblem on this fleet shows its affiliation, the Red River Mercenary Regiment. The head of the Red River Mercenary Group also immediately discovered the fleet of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group. After seeing the logo of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Corps, the head of the Red River Mercenary Corps also sneered. Heh, didn't that guy from Black Scorpion say that the news of eternal energy was all fake? I remember that the scope of activities of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group does not include the colorful galaxy. This guy is playing tricks too. The head of the Black Scorpion Mercenary Group also recognized the logo of the Red River Mercenary Group. At the same time, he also knew very well why the Red River Mercenary Group appeared here. It's all for that eternal energy. However, neither of them made a statement. The fleets of the two just met each other and left to explore the news of eternal energy in other directions. In this short period of time, nearly a hundred fleets have gathered in the colorful galaxy one after another. Maybe the colorful galaxy did not expect that, as an inconspicuous galaxy in the galaxy, there would be so many fleets today. And the purpose of these fleets is only one, that is to find Su Yan's fleet and snatch the eternal energy from his hands. But unfortunately, as the protagonist of this incident, Su Yan has already left the colorful galaxy. It turns out that Su Yan's decision was correct. If at that time, he still stayed in the colorful galaxy, he would definitely be besieged by many fleets. Now Su Yan has followed the news of the Xinghai Compass and came to the Whirlpool Galaxy. Brush! The Hyperion has come to the outskirts of the Spiral Star. 
Open the Planet List, Su Yen also investigated the planet information of the spiral star. A spiral is an iron-rich planet that contains enough iron to be mined by civilizations in several star systems. Civilizations have also been born from spiral stars, but these civilizations eventually pushed themselves to extinction. Today, on the surface of the spiral star, you may be able to see some huge factories built by civilized creatures. If you are lucky, you may be able to meet the descendants of the once civilization. But now they are close to extinction, and there are not many left. It is unimaginable that on this barren planet, the legendary eternal energy is buried here. Su Yan drove the ship to the surface of the Helix Star. As soon as he stepped into the atmosphere of the Helix Star, Su Yan felt the harsh environment of the planet. The strong wind rolled up the rust on the ground, and a large amount of iron sand fluttered in the wind. The entire planet panel looks like a desert gobi, but in fact, the gravel here is the product of iron or weathering. Looking down from the sky, you can vaguely see some abandoned factories. Su Yan did not dock the ship on the surface, and the environment on the surface was extremely harsh. If the ship is parked on the surface, it will be buried by iron sand in a short time. Therefore, after Su Yan descended to the ground, the ship was suspended in the atmosphere. Lin Qingyue and Ling Bing were stationed on the Hyperion, and if there was any situation, they could immediately contact Su Yan. And Su Yan and Bai Ying landed on the surface of the planet with a hundred thunder warriors. The wind was blowing, and Su Yan raised his hand to grab a handful of iron sand. In such an environment, Su Yan and the other thunder warriors also proceeded according to the directions marked on the map. At sunset, they stood in the iron sand desert and saw an abandoned factory. Seeing this, Su Yan also said to Bai Ying, There is an abandoned factory in front of us, we will take a rest there now. Getting closer and closer to the location marked on the map, Su Yan also saw a place to stay. Moving in the sandstorm not only hinders the movement, but also has limited vision. Su Yan and Bai Ying came to the abandoned factory with a hundred thunder warriors. After entering the factory, Su Yan also shook the iron sand on her body. The ghost weather in this place is really a disaster. It's okay, we'll be there soon. Trimming here for a few hours, then we move on to the factory. 35. Although Su Yan, Bai Ying and others are already psionicists, in such a harsh environment, their equipment will also be worn out due to the influence of iron sand. The repair at this time, on the one hand, is to prevent the view from being inconvenient when marching at night. On the other hand, it is also to let the Thunder Warriors maintain their equipment and take out the iron sand that was blown into the equipment. Otherwise, in the battle, these iron sands are likely to become lethal factors. Su Yen sighed, in this case, even if the ship landed, it was difficult to find them. At this moment, Bai Ying suddenly held his hand. Su Yen was stunned for a moment, but Bai Ying looked at him and said softly, Someone, anyone? After Su Yen heard these two words, she also raised her vigilance. The surrounding Thunder Warriors also seemed to feel something, and Su Yan stimulated his psionic power, and with the blessing of psionic energy, he finally found a little clue. In every corner of the factory, there are strangers moving. But it has to be said that the latent ability of these people is really good. If it wasn't for Bai Ying's reminder, he might not have known that there were people in this factory, besides them. These guys should have been lurking in the factory from the beginning, it's just that their arrival attracted the attention of these lurkers. Su Yen touched her chin and thought for a while. It has been said on the planet data before that there are remnants of the previous civilization on this spiral star. It is unknown to what extent the remnant populations on these planets have developed after such a long time. Su Yen also secretly raised her vigilance. There is one thing clearly stated in the Interstellar Navigation Code, do not underestimate any civilized race. Perhaps they did not develop interstellar navigation technology, or perhaps they were ignorant. But when you look down on them, their sharp knives can cut your throat. Every year in the Sea of Stars, there are not a few interstellar voyagers killed by the indigenous people. Su Yen also raised his vigilance, and just like that, the two sides were deadlocked until the second half of the night. In the middle of the night, darkness descended on this world. 
In the huge factory, except for the sound of the sand blowing constantly, the entire factory is extraordinarily silent. The two sides were in the dark, ready to go, the Thunder Warrior has already loaded the explosive bombs, and the Power Sword is also at hand. As long as there is a slight change, He-013 will pick up the Power Sword and kill the enemy. The sand was whistling, and needles could be heard throughout the factory. But at this moment, Baying suddenly stood up. The whole body burst out with psychic power, directly protecting Su Yen in it. Boom. 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 Several smoke bombs exploded directly, and the entire factory was immediately submerged in thick smoke. Amidst the thick smoke, several figures in windblown suits and windproof masks jumped out from various parts of the factory. There are lurkers in the beams, pipes, and even the pool. These lurkers are really endurable, and their hidden abilities also amaze Su Yen. Because he actually felt the existence of psionic energy in these lurkers. The lurkers in front of them are actually all psionicists. Although the psionic energy is very weak, it is because of the psionic energy that Su Yen can only perceive their existence but cannot locate them before they appear. These survivors of Helix Star have actually evolved psychic powers. This was an unexpected discovery. At this time, the lurkers also had a clear goal, and they were eyeing the supplies of Su Yen and his party. In such a wasteland world, materials are particularly important. When Su Yen and his party entered the factory, they were stared at by them. They don't ask to hurt anyone, but this batch of supplies must be obtained. In such a world, such a batch of materials is enough for them to survive for a long time. Material is life, in order to prolong their life, they will spare no expense. A lurker stretched out his hand to the supply bag. But at this moment, a big hand caught him directly in the smoke. The eyes under the lurker's mask are full of shock, what's the situation? How did the other party find him? At this time, the lurker also gritted his teeth. For his tribe, for his family, he must bring this material back, brush. A psychic power burst out from his body. Scarlet psychic energy enveloped his whole body, and his five senses instantly increased at this moment. His movements are more agile and his reflexes are faster. Even in darkness and smoke, his vision was as bright as day. The figure of the Thunder Warrior appeared in his field of vision, clearly visible. The next second, the lurker pulled out a short axe behind his back and slashed directly at the Thunder Warrior's neck. But then, accompanied by a crisp sound, flames scattered in the smoke. The lurker only felt a numbness in his arm, and the hatchet almost let go. The appearance of the energy shield directly bounced off the lurker's charge. In the smoke, the huge body of the Thunder Warrior slowly walked out. The next second, he stretched out his big hand and grabbed the lurker directly. The Thunder Warriors took down these lurkers with little effort. The smoke dissipated, and when the other lurkers saw their companions tied up, they were also stunned. What's the situation? How long has it been since? How come none of them succeeded? Not only did they fail, but in a short period of time, they were captured alive by the enemy. Su Yan looked at the Helix Star natives in front of him, and there was a hint of interest in his eyes. From the battle just now, these natives showed extremely powerful psionic skills. Their psionic skills should be able to strengthen their physical fitness and five senses in a short period of time. This skill is very similar to the Bloodhound that I knew before. The five senses allow them to see the enemy's applications clearly in the dark and in the smoke. Moreover, the blessing of psionic energy enables their physical quality and reaction speed to be greatly improved. The most important thing is that psionic power can continue to grow. In other words, they have the opportunity to become more powerful bloodhounds. Su Yen appreciates such races very much, and they are very suitable as one of his conscription planets. In the future, the scale of the battles facing him will only get bigger and bigger. I have also considered conducting a large-scale conscription, after all, my two moon-class cruisers together can carry tens of thousands of troops DBCG. The number of units rewarded by the system simply cannot fill the huge body of the moon-class cruiser. Thinking of this, Su Yan was also more interested in the race in front of him. 
A race with psionic power and suitable for lurking and fighting, if he earns his command, it will greatly improve his combat power. I just don't know how many of these lurkers are left. At this moment, Su Yen noticed that many strange-shaped birds flew in from the factory windows. These birds have a psychic aura, although they are very weak, they cannot escape my eyes. Baiying waved his hand, and several psychic missiles shot down those birds. Seeing those birds were shot down, several of the lurkers also changed their expressions. Su Yen looked at the lurkers, and it seemed that these birds were also a means of these lurkers. Control the beast? Interestingly, Su Yen is also more interested in these lurkers. At this moment, Su Yen also spoke. Are those birds under your control? But at this time, none of the lurkers answered. Seeing this, Su Yen directly showed his psychic aura. No doubt, I, like you, are also psionicists. The psychic aura emanating from your body is too obvious, I can easily feel the psychic aura on your body. So, put away your little tricks. Hearing this sentence, several lurkers also looked at Su Yen, they live on this wasteland planet. In their eyes, psionic power is the divine power given by the gods to help them survive in this dangerous world. But I didn't expect that these foreigners actually have magical powers. Moreover, their divine power is much stronger than theirs. Even the psychic aura displayed by the woman next to him was comparable to a god in their eyes. For a time, the inner worldview of those lurkers suffered a certain impact. It turns out that the power they possess is not divine power, but a special ability called psionic power. At this time, Su Yen also revealed his true purpose. I know that when you want to plunder supplies, you just want to eat and drink. But what would you think if I said, I will take you off this planet and give you enough food? Um? And such a good thing. On Helix, a planet where birds don't shit, even the survival of their tribe is a problem. They had to fight with the beasts on the planet, trudging through the mountains and waters in the wind and sand to find a little bit of water. Now, some people actually say that they will take them away from this planet, and they will also be covered with food. One of the lurkers licked his chapped lips and said with a little trembling, Can you really take us out of here? These lurkers want to leave this damn planet all the time. However, their civilization has fallen. Just based on their current level of civilization, it is impossible to create a starship to leave this ghost place. The appearance of Su Yen is tantamount to giving them a bright light in the darkness. I need excellent warriors. As long as you have strong combat power and can be used by me, I can lead you out of here. As soon as these words came out, those lurkers suddenly became excited. Leaving this purgatory-like place, you can still eat and live. Even now the lurkers still have some doubts about Su Yen, but rather continue to perish in this purgatory. It is better to follow the Lord in front of you and leave the galaxy to fight in the quartet. After all, Su Yen also distributed part of the supplies to these lurkers. At Su Yan's behest, the Thunder Warriors loosened the lurkers, and if the lurkers attacked again, Su Yan didn't mind sending them on their way. Su Yan handed a communicator to the lurkers, and then said to them, I will give you some of the supplies, and you will return to your tribe to gather enough warriors. What I need is a hound that can kill the enemy. As long as you show enough value, I will give you the best treatment. Looking at the large amount of supplies in the backpack, those lurkers also shined. Afterwards, they looked at Su Yen and swore to themselves. Be sure to seize this opportunity. When dawn came, those lurkers also left the abandoned factory with some supplies. Watching those lurkers leave, Su Yen also thought to herself. I don't know how many troops these lurkers can bring back in the end. And buying next to him also asked, aren't you afraid that they will never return? Su Yen stretched and was very calm minus. It doesn't matter. If they don't come back, all we'll lose is some food and a source of water. 5. But if they come back, we'll have an extremely powerful army of psychers. That is to say, even if Su Yen loses the bet, at most, he will only lose some materials. But if he wins the bet, he gets an army of psychers. It's a low risk, high reward trade anyway. And, think in a different light, you live on a planet with harsh environments all year round. 
every day you have to die for a little supply. At this time, someone tells you that they can not only take you away from this hostile planet. At the same time, he will give you enough food and water. If he were a normal person, he would choose to go with this person, no matter what. Instead of waiting to die on this barren planet, take this last chance. The opportunity has been given to them, and it is up to them to seize this opportunity. Su Yen also took out the map, and it was already daytime. The sandstorm outside the factory still shows no sign of stopping. Somewhat comfortingly, Su Yen also got information about map coordinates from these lurkers. At this map coordinate, there is a ruin, which the locals call the Ruins of the Sun God. Because in those ruins, there are various powerful stone statues that can release terrifying lasers. Basically, no one would die for those stone statues. With this information, Su Yen can also be sure. The so-called Sun God Ruins was the place they were looking for, and those stone statues that could release terrifying lasers were probably the psionic guards guarding the ruins. Su Yen had also seen this kind of psionic guard in the ruins of the White Knight clan before. Baiying also told Su Yen that this kind of psionic guard can keep running for a long time. Basically, there are psionic guards in some of the relics of the psionic family. However, according to the psionic potential of each psionic race, their psionic guards also have different styles. They ran all the way and finally came to the so-called sun ruins at sunset. A huge stone statue appeared in their field of vision. The crimson sun fell on this huge stone statue, and the entire sun god ruins were set off to be extraordinarily mysterious. Seeing this, Su Yen is also the entrance to find the ruins of the sun god. Not long after, they discovered the entrance of the sun god ruins, the entrance of the sun god ruins was actually in this huge stone statue. Because of the perennial dust storms on the spiral star, most of this relic has been buried. If Su Yen came later, he probably wouldn't even be able to find the entrance. After finding the entrance, Su Yen also directed the Thunder Warriors to enter first. Several Thunder Warriors entered the ruins of the Sun God, Su Yen and Baiying walked in the middle of the team. Su Yen held the map of the ruins of the Sun God, because with the map by his side, it was a lot easier for them to go deep into the ruins this time. Soon, the road ahead became clear. A huge underground space appeared in their field of vision, and the entire underground space was full of stone carvings. There were patterns and some alien characters engraved on the stone carvings, but unfortunately, Lin Qingyue was not by his side at this time, and he was not very clear about what these inscriptions said. This relic seems to be the relic of an ancient empire, at this moment, Baiying suddenly said these words. Hearing this sentence, Su Yan was also a little surprised. Do you understand the text on this? 39, but Baiying shook his head, I only understand a few ancient characters. These ancient characters are the ancient characters used exclusively by the ancient empires. Until now, it is estimated that very few Xinghai races understand this ancient script. The remains of an ancient empire? Su Yan secretly rejoiced in his heart, if it was the relic of the ancient empire, it also showed that the eternal energy really existed in this relic. Thinking of this, Su Yan's heart is also full of energy. Opening the map, Su Yan also continued to lead the troops towards the front. Finally, he came to the second secret room, according to the map. The eternal energy is in the third secret room, and they can find the eternal energy as long as they pass through this second secret room. But at this moment, what appeared in front of them was a huge tomb. In these tombs, one after another huge sarcophagus stands there. Each of these sarcophagi was the size of an interstellar ship, and when Su Yan first saw these sarcophagi, he thought it was a wall. But these sarcophagi are not just one, there are ten sarcophagi in this huge space. The huge sarcophagus is located in this secret room, like one high-rise building after another. Looking at these sarcophagi, Su Yen couldn't help but gasp. In such a big sarcophagus, is there a giant lying in it? Hearing this sentence, Baiying also answered solemnly. In the history of Xinghai, there is indeed a family of giants in the starry sky, and each of them is over a thousand meters tall. 39, however, this race quickly disappeared from the starry sky. 
After all, although their bodies are tall, their technological level is too poor. While talking, a psionic puppet suddenly appeared at the corner of the road ahead. Seeing the psionic puppet, Su Yan also stopped immediately. The psionic puppet opposite also found Su Yan and his party. At this moment, the psionic puppet burst out with an extremely wide range of psionic fluctuations. When this psionic wave began to spread around, Su Yan could feel more and more psionic reactions appearing within his perception range. The psionic puppet guarding this secret room is revived. Only the core of the psionic puppet in front of me burst out with a psionic laser. But the Su Yan at this time is no longer the original Su Yan. The thunder soldier pulled out the bolt gun with lightning speed. Boom! A bolter directly hit the psionic puppet. The core of the psionic puppet was directly smashed, and a psionic power dissipated from the core and drilled into the sarcophagus. A psionic puppet without a psionic core is just a pile of junk. But then, more and more psionic puppets began to approach. Su Yan used his psionic energy to simply investigate, and there were at least a thousand psionic puppets gathering around. Hiss! Sure enough, the relic where the eternal energy is located is completely different from the relic that I have encountered before. Thousands of psionic puppets, and the number is still rising. My own psionic detection range is limited, and I don't know how many psionic puppets are not activated. Thinking of this, Su Yan also immediately ordered the Thunder Warrior to run towards the third secret room. The movement speed of the team has also accelerated and there will be psionic puppets appearing from time to time along the way. But once those psionic puppets show up, they have nothing but ruthless bolt guns and sharp power swords to face. I don't know how long it took, Su Yen also felt tired. This secret room is ridiculously large, the length of these sarcophagi is comparable to a ship, and he has only passed the second sarcophagus until now. When they were there, a large number of psionic puppets were continuously attacking from all directions. Su Yen exhaled, secretly thinking in her heart, she knew that she would bring more Thunder Warriors over. If there were more Thunder Warriors, he wouldn't be so embarrassed. Zero, fortunately, they were already approaching the entrance to the third chamber. Su Yen continued to follow the map with the Thunder Warriors. Fortunately, he had the map and knew where the entrance to the third chamber was. Otherwise, with these sarcophagi obscuring the view, it is estimated that they would not know where the entrance to the third secret room is if they were submerged by psionic puppets. Finally, after a rush of attacks, the vision in front of them suddenly opened up. Above the huge stairs, a gate is waiting for them to come and open. However, before that, Su Yen gritted his teeth as he looked at the densely packed psionic puppets in front of the stairs. They are all here waiting for you. Su Yen looked at Bai Ying, at this time even the two of them had to make a move. Facing at least thousands of psionic puppets, Su Yen directly unleashed his psionics. Gravity control, 100 times gravity. For a time, Su Yan's psionic power consumed nearly half. But the effect is also obvious, the steps of those psionic puppets suddenly stopped. Seeing this, the Thunder Warriors also rushed into the psionic puppets, directly holding power swords. 100 Thunder Warriors are now incarnations of bulldozers. With the psychic blessings of Su Yen and Bai Ying, they kept advancing towards the third chamber. The surrounding psionic puppets came in a steady stream, as if they were never afraid. I don't know how long it took, when they stood in front of the third secret room, Su Yen could clearly see the whole picture of the secret room in front of him. Ten huge sarcophagi are arranged in a crisscross pattern in this huge secret room, and it is because of these intricate patterns that the entire secret room becomes a small labyrinth. And in this labyrinth, one after another psionic puppet is ready to go. Su Yen looked at the map in her hand, and felt fortunate in her heart. Fortunately, they got the map, otherwise they will be exhausted by those psionic puppets in the labyrinth sooner or later. Su Yan roughly estimated that there were at least tens of thousands of psionic puppets they encountered. Of course, there may be more psionic puppets they haven't encountered yet. What kind of civilization actually arranges so many psionic puppets here? What exactly is in that sarcophagus? A loss. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like share and subscribe.
Have a great day.